Josh, can you say the name of the school you're playing this week? Are you allowed to, or is it like the other team? Um, I'm not sure what the rules are about that, so I'll just call them Team Up North State right now. Um, no, I mean, Michigan State's a really good team. Um, we're going to prepare really hard for them. When you, you have that rivalry with the other team, we all know what that is, and we all know there's motivation and all the history that comes with that. This week, you're playing a team that beat you last year. You're tied for first. Is like is the motivation and getting geared up is it the same as like a rivalry like that? Is it is it different? I, what's like the vibe for a game like this? Um, it's similar, but it's definitely not the same. The vibe is that it's a really big game, um, and we're gonna have to play really hard. And our goal is to compete for championships in November, and so this is obviously gonna be uh, one of the bigger games for us to be able to do that. Josh, for all the resounding success you guys have had the last few years, does it feel like maybe you guys lack a, a truly signature win? Because Urban was talking about kind of gaining some national respect. What would a top 10 win on the road mean? Um, I think we're lacking one a little bit, and uh, that win would mean a lot. Obviously, it would be great for our goal. Um, since I've been here, we haven't won a Big Ten championship, and I know that we'd like to do that. Uh, so to be able to go up there and win would obviously put us in the right track for doing that. Is there a little bit of a different mindset that comes into a week? Like when you guys came back on Sunday after, or even today, I don't know if you guys had a gathering on Sunday, but is there a, you, you come in with a different focus, a different mindset because of who you're playing this week? Uh, you come in this week just knowing how important preparation is. And so we started a little bit yesterday. Um, Sunday practices, we usually go over corrections, but we started doing a little bit of installing and just getting a look at uh, what they like to do and then today a lot of guys were in the film room just uh, taking notes and taking in what they do and tomorrow I'm pretty sure we'll have a better idea of what the game plan is but um, you know like I said the preparation is going to be key for this game you have two pretty good teams going against each other uh, it's getting late in the season and so um, you know teams are getting a little bit more savvy and, and players are becoming better so you have to prepare really well where does their offense start I mean they throw the ball really well. Mm -hmm. Langford, you know, know about him. Where, if you're looking at him, where where do you think it starts for Michigan State offense? Um, you know, I, I think they just, they know that they have a solid offense and they've got good guys. They've got a quarterback who can do a lot of things. Um, he's an intelligent guy. He's a, a good passer. And then they've got some weapons, like you said. Uh, Langford's a really good running back. And then they've got a couple of receivers that can make plays. Um, they're very solid on the O-line, so they know that they can do a lot of different things to attack defenses. Speaking of, of Connor Cook, he seems like a guy who's he's hard to sack, number one. And, and two, is he hard to sack because he, you know, he, he'll he take more chances than a lot of other quarterbacks? Uh, I think that he he's a confident guy knowing what he has around him in terms of weapons, and then the guys protecting him are pretty good. So I think that has something to do with it. Um, you know, when you play a quarterback like that, you just got to get to know his tendencies a little bit. And I'm sure we'll, we'll find out some things on film maybe, um, and then we'll find ways to get after him a little bit. Has, does it help at all going into another tough environment that you guys had the Penn State experience a couple weeks ago? Definitely. I think that's, uh, you know, it helped us grow as a team, definitely. I think that also helped our defense realize that, um, you know, we can hang in there and, and we can go in there and play really well, um, even if our offense isn't putting up 50 points and still be in the game. So uh, it's good that we had an experience like that. I said it before, we're still pretty young on defense. We got guys who don't have necessarily a ton of experience. So to be able to get into a game like that where you really had to put everything on the line and it came down to making a few plays was good. Joshua, is it kind of a relief that you're playing a team that's really good? I mean, everybody, you, everybody wants to see you play somebody well to see how you come out of it. And maybe you do too? Mm -hmm. um, you know, th these are the games that you get excited for. Um, when I came to Ohio State, I knew I wanted to play in games like these. Uh, and so that's going to put a little bit more on it. I know that our older guys, they're, they're going to put their all into it because they obviously don't have a, a lot of chances to, to win those championships and compete the way that we want to. And our young guys always play hard for us, and they're always hungry. So it's going um, to be good to see how guys can come together on the field. Joshua, what's it like being at Ohio State and, and finding yourselves in a situation where you're looking up at another team, another team's the, the dominant team in this conference? Um, you know, it's one of those situations where you say, uh, hey, we came here to be in big games, and whether we're looking up at another team or not is something you got to deal with. Um, it's a good way to see how guys are going to respond and see how we've uh, grown as a team. How much extra motivation is there that you lost to them last year? 
Um, there's extra motivation, but we, we know that all of our, our dreams for this year are still alive, and so we've just got to go out there and, and play them tough. We've got to prepare, like I said. Um, and, you know, you go up there, you give them your best shot. Have you watched film from that game this week? Uh, I mean, there's probably going to be some stuff from the cutups just to get a good look at uh, what their offense is doing. We're not going to look at that film for any reason except for game plan. Is there any motivation to show people that this is the best defense of the Big Ten? Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, you just got to go out there and play every game. It doesn't matter, I guess. It's a nameless, faceless opponent, and sometimes when you get some of the defenses that maybe aren't the top in the Big Ten, uh, you don't respond as well. So you just got to go out there and play. I know you're not playing their defense. Obviously, you guys are never on the field at the same time. But I mean, this, these are two of the better defenses in the country. Do you look at their defense at all and say, you know, we have to be better than them for four quarters? Um, at times. But at the same time, you got to say that our offense is playing really well and that uh, we, we've made some big plays and we've had some explosive uh, games this year on offense. So um, you just, we have to go in there knowing what our game plan is, being able to prepare, being able to uh, you know key on, on their players, maybe see what their tendencies are, and, and then just line up and go play ball. Um, we obviously know we have to have a big night on defense. And like I said earlier, that Penn State was a, a good benchmark to see what we were able to do defensively in terms of holding a team. But um, you know we'll go out there and we'll play our hardest. How long did it take to get over last year's loss, or do you ever get over a, a game like that? Too? Well, you, you got to get over it because last year we played a game after that, and so um, we had to look at what we did in that game, make corrections, and move on. Um, I mean, that game was in the past, is almost a year ago, and we've got another one this year, so we can't dwell on what happened last year. We can't look at the past and and try to do too much. Um, the one big thing that's going to come from that game last year is it's going to be emotional for a lot of guys, especially some of the older guys. Um, but football is always an emotional game, so you're going to have to be able to uh, get your emotions under control and then go play ball. Does it feel any different? You guys are technically the underdog in this game. Mm -hmm. This is maybe the first time in your career that you guys have been you know, the underdog. Yeah, I mean, it feels good to be an underdog sometimes um, because then a lot of people are looking at you and they're trying to see what you can do in that sort of uh, scenario. And a lot of the training that we do here, you're, you're in a situation where you either go or you don't. And so this is going to be a good one for us. Um, you know, we're going to go back to our training, obviously, with some of that stuff. But like I keep saying, um, they're a really good team, but I think that we're pretty good right now, too. And so whoever prepares the best, I think um, whoever you know goes out in the field and executes what their plan was will we'll have a better day. Sense of revenge for this game? Uh, not really. I mean, we're just, we know what's on the line for this game. We know what's at stake. And we know how important it is for us to be able to compete for a championship. But um, besides that, I mean, we're, we're just going to prepare really hard and go play. What makes uh, Langford um, so tough running the ball? He's, he's got a good line up front, I know, too. But yeah, stands out. Um, he's got a really good line, but he's a strong runner. Um, he's got a pretty good burst, and uh, his vision is pretty good, too. So we're going to need to have guys that are gap sound and uh, that know their assignments, and then when we tackle, we're going to have to wrap up, and we're going to have to get a lot of guys to the ball, too. Hey, Josh, I know you said you put last year's game behind you, but this week, if you guys haven't done it already, you've seen the film from last year. What? When you watch the film from last year, what kind of feelings are conjured up inside you? Um, we just know that we have to go out there and, and play the best ball of the year that we played. Um, you know, as far as feelings go, you got to put those to the side sometimes, and you can't let them overwhelm you um, because that could be detrimental. So the preparation is going to have to be with a clean mind um, and knowing that we can compete, knowing that we just need to go out there and play a really good game. Josh, how do you process? said negatively about the Big Ten? Um, you know, it's, I think it's kind of bad. We've got good teams in the Big Ten. And we've obviously seen that with some of the competition that's gone on this year, uh, some of the games that we've won. And then um, if you look at the, the teams that are really good in the Big Ten, I think we can compete with everybody. So 
uh, we just, I mean, we have to go out there and, and take care of our business too. And then at the end of the year, we'll let the people decide what they, they want to think. This is a week though when everybody's going to be watching the Big Ten. Do you, mm -hmm. is, is, you feel almost a, a responsibility as much as anything else to uh, put on a show, so to speak? Uh, you know, it's one of the reasons why you come to a school like Ohio State or Michigan State is for a, a Big Ten matchup like this, night game in, in the big setting. So um, is there a responsibility to go out there and put on a show? Kind of. Um, but again, like I said, we have to prepare really well. It's where it all is going to start. And then we're going to have to go out there and execute uh, when we get in the atmosphere. You said a couple times about just how much you have to prepare for this game and how it's going to be key. And Urban talked about it. Mm -hmm. is that, what does that literally mean? Does that mean like every moment you're awake and not in class, you're watching film or thinking about this game? Or does that mean just a couple extra hours of film work? What does that literally kind of, in a week like this, what's, a week, what's it like for you? Um, it means that guys who have the really good routines of getting in the film room and, and doing that whole thing need to keep up with their routine. And then uh, maybe some of the younger guys uh, get them going just make sure that they're taking care of all their business. Um, you know, does that mean watching a ton of extra film? There's a certain point where you can watch as much film as you can put on, but it's not going to help if you don't know what you're looking at. It means being efficient about things, too. Um, it means taking care of your body. It means getting to sleep. It means taking care of the academics. And it means having a clear mind. You should be watching film right now if you were talking to us. I was just in there watching film. so. <laughs> A couple more questions. Do you hate us right now? Or? No. <laughs> Josh, you, you, were about, you were talking about Langford a minute ago and stuff, but uh, does every kind of everything kind of on their offense evolve from them setting up a power running game, I mean, or establishing him as a runner? Yeah, uh, a bit, and they do the, the whole thing. They've got the power running game. Um, they'll also get it on edges, but, again, that comes from the power running game. And then uh, I haven't looked too much at what they do in the pass game, but I know that uh, they're a good team passing. And, their quarterback is a really good passer too, and they've got some uh, some weapons. So, uh, for us, I think that learning the assignment and just being able to to break everything down into a certain category and say when you get these plays, do this; when you get these plays, do that, uh, will will be good. Does Langford fit that definition though of being that kind of back that, that that they're looking for? You understand what I mean? To to establish himself between the tackles, et cetera. So yeah. You guys yeah. Um, I think that. That's what they want to do. They want to get him started. And I know they've got a couple other backs that can run the same way. Um, and like, yeah. yeah, I mean, that'll help open up the playbook. But like I said, we've got guys, you know, our, our secondary is so much more improved from last year and getting better every game. And then our D line, I think, is is top notch. So as long as we got our guys doing their, their jobs and we can come together as a defense, um, we'll, we'll be all right. And the video you've watched, are they more freewheeling than they were a year ago when y'all were getting ready for them for the Big Ten Championship game with Cook being more, uh, you know, experienced, et cetera? What, what do you notice? I mean, obviously they're, they're scoring. You and them are averaging 45 points a game. Mm -hmm. what, what do you notice that's different about their offense from a – maybe get after it standpoint? I don't know if there's a whole bunch different. I think that they're a very confident team and they know that they've got good players and I think that makes a lot of difference. Are you allowed to wear green this week? Uh, I mean, they haven't told us not to. I don't know how many guys will be. <clears throat> I've got the camo boots on, so maybe that's a faux pas for this week, but keep it going. <laughs> Did right. you wear orange last week? <laughs> uh, I can't even remember last week. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like a Earth Tones kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs>